Good morning, everybody. It's Christopher from Center Education with the four majors. Now it's update for the 4th of April, 2013. Morning, everybody. Hope you had a great day yesterday. Getting closer to non farm payroll Thursday. Loads of news out today. I cannot stipulate we have a lot of news coming out today. So if anything, if you're not trading, uh, expect a bit of volatility. And we had volatility this morning, guys. Early this morning, Bank of Japan has uh, now confirmed they are going to continue with quantitative easing. Bank of Japan says at the end of 2013, the monetary base is to be 20 trillion yen, and by 2014, it is to be 270 trillion yen. It's crazy. So those those fax copiers are going to be printing like crazy out there. I'd suggest going long on any copier produ production companies in Japan. Um, it's going to be absolutely crazy. And according to Bank of Japan, introduces quantitative and quantitative monetary easing. So what it's done is you've seen the US dollar or anything against the yen cross pairs actually double in value in little or no time. We've seen two 300 pips move this morning from 5 a.m. GMT and we've seen the Nikkei index in that rally quite significantly but the US, uh, the good old yen has obviously decreased substantially. So if we can maintain this then we're going to see um, some really good positive rallies for the foreseeable future. Uh, ideally, the US dollar Japanese yen in particular, I can remember that 9400, we were trading below 9400, as I mentioned yesterday, it didn't look all that great because of the fact that we, that we were trading below 9400. It's done in about yields. If we can stay above 9400 uh, by the close Friday night, tomorrow night on the uh, GMT, then we could see the following week looking very, very positive because 94 now is a strong support. And we're looking for that hammer candle on a weekly. If we get that or bullet and golfing candle, because last week was very disaster, we had a spinning top or a doji if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we should see price really moving to the upside. Now you can see it very, 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 very clearly in front of me. The US dollar Japanese yen, 9400, climbing. So this is a weekly chart, guys. Just looking at it just recently. If we get above that, then we should be looking top side uh, for the foreseeable future. So we have, uh, we wanted to see that pullback and a support. So breakout, a pullback. Now, is this going to uh, confirm the support and the continuation? We get the continuation, then we should look to these highs at 9700 for the foreseeable future. Get above that, then we're looking at that all important 100 mark, which happens to be the prior support and resistance level. There we go, that we saw back in 2009. So that'll be a nice little target. There's enough pips on there for the time being. So look at that for your long term target for the US dollar Japanese yen. Look to see if we can actually see price building on that. There's a daily. You can see a lot of movement this morning. And you can see that intermediate swing down to the downside. So swing that swing low is being broken. Back above 94. If we can stay above 94, then we should be targeting the prior consolidation high at 96.50. Get above that, then we're in plain sailing towards that all important 100 mark to the upside for the foreseeable future. On to euro against US dollar. Let's have a look at the weekly here again. This particular pair consolidating under 1300, moving into that price support and resistance level here at the 127500 mark. And you can see that price has been very tentative this week on the weekly, very indecisive. We're looking at a spinning top here. Uh, the one thing to, 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 to be aware of is the fact that we're trading below all the moving averages and our CTC is still looking negative across the board. But we'd like to get below that 1275. The longer it consolidates at 1275, there's more of an opportunity or potential for price to actually pull back as, uh, further. And we could see that 1300 being retested quite soon. So very, very important that this is to be to maintain this negativity then we need to see the 1270 being broken as soon as possible. If we do see that, then the likelihood of price running to the next price support and resistance level, roughly in the shape of the 12, uh, 400 mark here, price support and resistance would be spot on. So, got to see price breaking and closing lower than that 12.75 mark to see any further selling opportunities. Because at the moment now, if I go to my daily, you can quite clearly see the price has been very consolidated this week. And if anything, in the 1275, there we go, there's a 1275 on my right side. You can see price being very consolidated and moving back towards the 1285, which is at the underside of the institution moving average. And the daily trading below the institution, under the institution moving average is not a good sign. Clearly before, we were trading above and you can see very much that we were in a positive trend. However, near term, very, very negative. You can see lower swings and price recently moving sideways. And if it maintains below the institution moving average, there's more likelihood for price to start dropping. We'd like to see a nice bearish engulfing candle to the downside as we hit, or we'd like to break this 12.7500 mark first, and then we can look to that 12.400 uh, mark as I mentioned below, 
not too far away, but far enough in order to capitalize quite nicely from it. There is a lot of news out today. Could we see the catalyst, i.e. to give us the bearish engulfing candle to continue this downside trend today or tomorrow? We have a lot of news out today for both the euro. We have, what do we have today? We have Italian service bonds. We have Spanish service PMI. We have the French 10-year bond auction, Spanish 10-year bond auction. We have the minimum bid rates, guys, at 12.45 GMT this afternoon. Uh, they expect no change there, 0.75%. They expect no change. That should remain the same. So then we have all the FOMC speakers this afternoon for the U.S. market. Uh, unemployment claims. It will be very interesting what happened. We saw uh, yesterday in particular the unemployment claims coming out and very, very negative indeed. And we saw most of the cross pairs against the U.S. dollar rising. Um, are we going to see, we're seeing hesitation, you know, they're expecting unemployment claims of roughly uh, 5,000 short of the previous month's figures. It'll be interesting to see how that comes out. If it comes out even worse than that, then we can expect um, the cross pairs to do well against US dollar. If those come out positive, then expect any cross pairs against US dollar to fall. So we could see the catalyst soon, either today or tomorrow, if we want to see any further uh, movement on this particular pair. In today, you can see the institutions above price and you can see price has been consolidating under the 1290 in particular the 1285 not really wanting to be going higher than that and you can see that price is now stalling swing highs intermediate on our in our four hour time frame swing high swing high swing high however we've been capped by the 1285 we're on a negative trend you can see the overall trend is down a lot of speculative trading very indecisive look at all these breakouts very very these failed breakouts over here so a lot more red than blue. So we should be looking for that for that negativity in the market. If price cannot actually rally against the 1280 uh, mark, then expect to look for a bearish engulfing candle to continue that to the downside. And we should be targeting that all important 1275, which is our weekly support and resistance. Hourly chart, you can see that we've seen a a, a nice stop, uh, almost a higher uh, a stop measure here as price has failed to rally any higher. You can see this bearish engulfing candle at 5 a.m. GMT this morning forming the swing. We'd like to see price now moving to the downside. You can see that all the moving averages are above price as we speak and our CTC selling we should be in shorting opportunities. So at the moment now, look to see if we can capitalize to the downside. We've got some targets here, quite close in fact. There's one here at 12,800, another one here at 12,078 and that all important 12,7500 mark as I mentioned is our long-term target for this particular pair. So intraday, look for those downside moves to continue as price fails at this 12.8500 mark at the top here, which is the institution moving average. On to sterling, let's have a look at this on the weekly. Price being very negative now, we've seen this top side, almost top heavy, and you can see price is now failing at 15.300. We've seen a lot of momentum to the downside of this level. Are we getting the confirmation that sterling has now found a resistance now where prior support was at 15.300? It really looks that way. So we should be looking for negative sentiment on our daily Etc. to the downside, you can quite clearly see two days ago, uh, yesterday in, in, in fact on the uh, Wednesday, very indecisive from that bearish engulfing candle and now tackling that 14, that 1505 mark. Got to get below the 1505 because it has been consolidation in the past. Get below that and then it's now in clean fresh air towards that 14500 mark. And that 14500 mark is a price support and resistance level. If I can take you back to a weekly just to show you that. There we go, there's at 1485. If I just pull out, you can see quite clearly we had a consolidation here in May, April of 2010. So we have some support there which we can actually target near term. So that could be our target for the foreseeable future if and when we can break below this 1505. I mentioned yesterday that we need to get below that. You can see the 1505 has now been targeted. We saw the bounce and price now reverted. So the next four hour candles in play right now. Is tackling that institution moving average. You can quite clearly see the institution moving average here. More blue, so we're selling us. We should still be looking positive, even though we're moving into a major support and resistance level high. But if we get below 1505, we'll be trading below the institution and we can start looking towards that all important 1485. There's one or two areas of consolidation in between all this, but ideally, our target would be the 1485 long term. Doing the hourly chart, there we go. There's my 1505. Want to get below that. And then we're trading into clean air, and then we can target the downside. You can see my 1485 mark down the bottom here. Bit of consolidation in between all this, but ideally, 
we should be looking for that long term uh, 14,500 mark to the downside when we get that break and close below that that that, that 15,05 mark. Be very very speculative. Don't want to be trading in the speculation. Rather trade some clean air. Get below that area, and then we can be targeting the 14,500 to the downside as we head into the end of week. Last pair of the day, US dollar, Japan, uh, US dollar Swiss franc. We've been through the Japanese yen already. Let's have a look at that weekly. Last week very bullish indeed. However, not really moving above that prior. Uh, breakout high. We wanted to see that. We saw the breakout, the pullback, and then we saw the continuation last week. But that continuation not really taking that momentum forward. And this week being very, very tentative. Uh, trading outside of that close, nonetheless, still wanting to, to move higher, but very, very tentatively. You can see on the daily, falling lower. And uh, that 940 being the major support and resistance. To so as long as 940 remains in, in play, or plus maintains above 940, it's still looking positive. Uh, the US dollar um, has gained a bit of strength this morning against most of its cross pairs as the yen, um, as I mentioned, the yen going on some quantitative easing measures, uh, similar, trying to get some stimulus in the market. Uh, the new Bank of uh, Japan um, is trying to get a lot of money into the market and gone on this quantitative easing and sure enough we've seen the yen falling against most of its cross pairs. But you find other uh, a, a lot of other cross pairs have actually grown in strength, including the Nikkei index. Um, so yeah, we're seeing the U.S. Um, market making or the U.S. dollar making a bit of ground against its cross pairs. Are we going to see it against the U.S. Uh, against the Swiss franc? Uh, and as I mentioned, I mean long term is looking very very consolidated. You can see the RSI here pretty much topping out. I mean this prior high, uh, this particular breakout here uh, above the prior high here on the daily. Um, you can see RSI was still flat. It wasn't higher than the previous one. You can see that. Um, that's my only concern. We like to get up above all of this co uh, consolidation here to tell us this is true uh, sentiment to the upside. Uh, if we don't see that, then we're going to see the US dollar waning against the Swiss franc. Uh, we are going into a lot of news today and tomorrow, so we could expect some fireworks. And you can see on the four-hour chart, these swing, the, these highs are getting lower. Uh, we had a nice shooting start. And not too long ago, a nice exhaustion candle and price would target the price support and resistance, which is done. But now I found support near term, and you can see over the past couple of hours, 20 hours or so, been moving sideways, and now we've seen the US dollar gaining a bit of strength since this morning's news announcement on the bank from the Bank of Japan. So moving into the institution, uh, if we can get above the institution moving average, then we should be targeting back up towards 950. That's been a very long major support and resistance level consolidation area for this particular pair. Get above 950 and then we're looking to target those all-time highs at 955 etc. But ideally long term we'd like to get above all of this because at the moment now it's trading in a lot, it's, it's trading in a very speculative range, a very um, consolidative range and we're not really getting any, I mean look at the, the top, it's no clear signal. It's very, it's either all blue or, or, or red and you can see here it's a bit of everything. So like to get above 955, get into that clean air and then we can talk more. At the moment now, it, it, it's it's really trading within a, a, a very um, consolidated mood. Um, ideally, if we're going to see any any further movement to the upside for the US dollar, we do need to find a very strong support being uh, being found. It has so uh, spent the last couple, well, most part of April, uh, the side of April, finding support here. It's got to get above that 950 for me to see any further movement to the upside because. If you're trading now, we're trading into a price consolidation, and that's just not good at the moment with things stacked up. So, hourly, you can see the institutions below uh, above price, which is not a good sign. Get above that 950. If you can hang on to that 950 high, and then try and find some mustard to the upside, then we couldn't be targeting those 955, 960 uh, moves to the upside. But at the moment now, very speculative. I'm going to stay away from this until we get into cleaner air. I prefer to trade cleaner air. I don't like trading the speculation. It just drives me crazy. So at the moment now, US dollar Swiss franc is not on my on my cards at the moment. I'll wait and see what happens by the end of this week, and then we'll see to, see if we get any clean signals for trading next week. Okay, guys, that's for today. I hope you have a fantastic trading day. Please abide by the rules if you are trading in the streams education strategy. Um, all of you out there who are interested in, in our MetaTrader templates, please get hold of us at customer services at sereneeducation.com. We've got some uh, MT4 strategy templates um, that we are teaching our students. If you're interested, please drop us an email. If not, 
Um, please abide by the rules. Make sure you back it up with some money management and keep it simple, guys. Okay, we've seen a lot of movement. Bank of Japan's come up with some some uh, some news that's really going to potentially kick off the market, especially the US dollar against most of its cross pairs. That means we could see a, re a return to upside. We've seen a lot of consolidation on any yen crosses. And with the news that's come out this morning with Bank of Japan, we could see most of those cross pairs getting back into winning ways again. Uh, we could see the consolidation breakouts to the upside. If we do get that, then jump on board, look at the money management and target the, the, the next highest to the upside as we see the um, most of these crosses finding more strength against the yen over the next couple of months. Okay, have a fantastic trading day. Look out for the news, guys. Be very, very vigilant. There's a lot of news coming out today, especially today and tomorrow. Um, a lot of interest rates announcements today for especially the European market and sterling, but we also have tomorrow's news very, very important. Okay. Otherwise, have a fantastic training and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Until then, trade serenely.